All right, Pie People, it's the Average Man here. We have got an Average Man exclusive this morning. Uh, okay, so you know this, this is the Pi 2. This is no longer cool, okay? There it goes. This is the new Pi 3. Yes, uh, the Pi 0 has only been out a matter of months, and they've gone and come out of a brand new Model B. In terms of packaging, uh, it's exactly the same as always. So you've got the uh, anti-static bag that was loose, um, unpinned, and uh, just the kind of normal box. Uh, it's exactly the same as the Pi 2 box. It's a different colour, um, but it comes empty. It comes with a little manual. I'm not sure what I've done with that. I normally throw them away straight away because uh, nobody reads manuals these days, do they? Or terms and conditions or anything important. Uh, and then the Pi comes out, and that's it. So that, that's the kind of packaging you get. Um, it's the same as we've always had. Um, it, it does the job. Um, and that's pretty much it for packaging. So what's in this thing? Uh, okay, so this is the new Broadcom BCM2387. In a nutshell, that has got a 1.2 gigahertz ARM Cortex-A53 CPU, and the graphics is the same as the Pi 2 and some of the Pi's before it. That's a Video Core 4. Uh, it's also got, I think that's on the back, uh, the same uh, one gigabyte RAM that the Pi 2 had as well. The main thing, and the thing I'm really interested in, is this has new connectivity options. So whilst you can't see it here, this has Wi-Fi built in. That's a massive step, especially in 2016. We're in a Internet of Things world now. That is massive, and for me, I think that's going to be really, really useful. Um, it's also got Bluetooth as well. So uh, it's Bluetooth. Let me just check. It's Bluetooth 4.1, and it's classic. And you've also got the low energy version as well built in there. How fast is this thing? Um, so what I'm doing on the blog that I'm going to write on this, the blog's over at averagemanversusraspberrypi.com, I'm going to be running a couple of tests that Adafruit actually ran before uh, when we went from the B plus to the Pi 2. It's a lot of it based around JavaScript, but I just wanted to get a bit of a, I don't know, like a litmus test to see how much quicker this is. I've heard some kind of rumblings that it's around about twice as fast as the Pi 2, but uh, that's kind of a sweeping statement, so I wanted to check it out myself. So head over to the blog and I'll have some results on there. Wi-Fi. I don't know where the Wi-Fi is on this. Um, I, I assumed it'd be a chip of some sort, but I can't see anything. Uh, but it is in there, and the Wi-Fi is the kind of 802.11 B, G, and N. Uh, I'm trying to think of what the new version is. I think it's AC that's just started to roll out. It doesn't have AC, um, but the, the B, G, and N is going to be the same as most of the adapters you are probably already using, kind of your Edimax, Pi Hut style adapters, or even the, the Foundations adapter there. Um, so that's all going to be built in, and that's going to be part of Raspberry, and they're still working on that bit of software, but by the time this is released, uh, that's going to be working out of the box. Bluetooth. Uh, something else I, I can't see. I'm, I'm expecting a chip that just says Bluetooth on it. Um, the Bluetooth is built in, and it is Bluetooth 4.1. I don't know what the difference is, but I'm assuming 4.1 is up there. I think the latest phones are running around 4.1 or 4.2, kind of your iPhones and your, and your Samsung S6s, that kind of thing. Um, and it runs a classic and the LE edition. So that LE is your uh, low energy Bluetooth. Um, and so depending on what you're doing, that could be really handy. I don't know how you're going to switch between the two. Um, and I haven't seen that in the software yet. The software's still being developed for Bluetooth. Um, but yeah, that's going to be really handy. Immediately, I think, okay, you might your keyboard, but also, you know, if you've got a robot, your, your Bluetooth controller, your PS3 controller, you're going to have loads of options there. Um, I'd love to show you the Bluetooth part, but honestly, I, I don't know where they put these things. This, this must be magic. So there you go. Bluetooth's in there as well. Okay, let's talk about ports. So, as you can probably see, and I've got here a Pi 2, let's put those next to each other, everything's exactly the same. So, the USB is in the same place. I'm even gonna, I'm probably gonna, look, which one's which? Who knows? Um, okay, so the only way I can tell is there's a few differences on the layout, the print, etc. It seems the Raspberry Pi logo seems to get smaller per version. If I had a B plus here, I could show you. I have got a B plus here, look at this, ready? Okay, logo quite large. Pi 2, got a bit smaller. Pi 3, I've heard the Pi 4 won't have a logo. No, I haven't heard that at all. But uh, anyway, under ports, so uh, everything's the same. So everything's in the same place, all your existing hats and your cases and all that kind of good stuff's going to fit the same. GPO is still there, still 40 pins, your DSi, your CSi, whichever way around that is. That's all there. HDMI, your audio, your power, Ethernet, it's all the same. And I think that's a good move because uh, they've changed the format before when we went from kind of your original Model Bs to this version, which was which was fine because obviously had more ports to add, uh, but then all the existing stuff we'd all bought didn't fit. So the last three models, the B+, the Pi 2, and the Pi 3 have all kind of kept the same uh, shape and layout, so that's really handy. So all your existing stuff should fit. Okay, next I'm going to talk about power. So 
Uh, previously, your Raspberry Pi would have been powered by uh, USB. That's just a random cable I've got there. Um, so they're still powered the same way, still a micro USB connection. In fact, all the connections are pretty much the same on here in the same places. Um, however, you used to be able to get away with anything around about 2 amp was pretty safe for the Raspberry Pi. Um, if you want to get the most out of this and use this board uh, on a kind of a heavy basis, um, you need to pump that up to 2.5 amps. I'm guessing that's because of the a more powerful processor, but also um, wherever it is, uh, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, they're definitely going to obviously take some power as well. We all know that Wi-Fi adapters used to take quite a lot of power. Um, I'm sure an onboard Wi-Fi will be a bit more efficient, but this thing definitely needs a bit more juice. So uh, your existing power supplies, they, I've been told they will work, but only if you're using this kind of a, uh, on a moderate basis. If you're going to use the, this, this full capacity, you're going to need to get a new power supply. Okay, so what's the same on this? And I'm talking about the same in terms of the uh, comparison to the Pi 2. Uh, so I already talked about ports and layout, but uh, these ports are still USB 2. Um, so we haven't gone to USB 3 on this. I know some of you will be upset with that, but obviously they've got a price point they want to meet there. Um, whilst we're on this side, the Ethernet, that's the same. Uh, so we haven't gone to gigabit Ethernet. I know, I know, a lot of you are crying out for that for a long time. Um, but no, they haven't done that either. So we've still got the kind of, uh, I think it's called it's 100 to 1 or 110. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's the same as it's always been there. Um, the audio connection works exactly the same way, HDMI is the same, obviously the GPO is obviously the same, 40 pins, the belts do the same job. And one thing I did notice is here, you've got the little light bar, it's in like a little block now, which I quite like. So if I pull out this Pi 2, it's hard to tell them apart now, uh, you just had kind of the LED soldered there, but you've now got like a light bar on the on the Pi 3, so that's pretty cool. Um, but that's mostly, this, everything mostly, I mean, Raspbian's the same. So you're still going to download the same image. Whether they'll do a separate image, I, I doubt it, but you know maybe they will, because obviously it's got the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth and a few differences. But I imagine they'll build that all into Raspbian, um, and then it'll just pick up that it's a Pi 3 and use those things. Let's talk about money. How much money are you going to have to throw at this thing to get one? Well, um, they're looking to keep the same price point, so I've been told it's going to stick to the same $35 price point. I don't have any dollars here, so I can't show you that. Let's get this good old sterling out of the way. Uh, okay, so it's going to be $35 again. Um, so I don't know how they do it because it's been $35 for a while and there's been inflation and all that kind of good stuff. But that's really good of them. So same price as what the Pi 2 was. Um, I'm sure you have some variance between stores and between countries. But generally, it's going to be the same price. So that's it. That's the new Raspberry Pi 3. Um, they're available as of today. Um, all the usual places. I got this one from RS Components, um, so they'll have those in stock right now. I don't know how many they've got, but um, if history teaches anything, they're going to run out of stock straight away. So get over there as quick as you can. Um, like I say, same price point. If you were planning on buying a Pi 2, lucky you, you can now get this for probably the same price, maybe a couple of quid difference. Um, but yeah, that's it guys. So you've now got a faster processor. You have got Wi-Fi, you have got Bluetooth. You're going to need to pump in a bit more power, uh, but all that for the same money. So go out and get one. Thanks for watching, guys. Head over to the blog, averagemanversusraspberrypi.com, and I'll see you next time.